this lecture introduces you to the main sources of uh, government revenue and the category of uh, government spending. We we'll explore uh, different philosophy uh, regarding the distribution of uh, a nation tax burden. We're also gonna talk about a principle related to tax shifting, tax incidence, and uh, the efficiency loss caused by uh, uh, taxes. We'll conclude with uh, how the distribution of uh, uh, income between uh, they have and they do not have um, is affected by a uh, uh, government uh, taxes transfer and uh, spending. So let's start it with uh, the content of the chapter. So the government and the circular flow that we um, discussed in the previous uh, lecture. Um, government finance, uh, federal finance, uh, state and local finance. We will look at also the state, uh, local and uh, federal employment. Um, the task burden, uh, we'll review the task uh, burden, uh, who burn uh, uh, the taxes, who pay taxes, uh, tax incident, and uh, efficiency loss caused by uh, uh, taxes and a probable uh, incidence of uh, US uh, taxes. So you recall this uh, circular flow uh, that we did in the past without uh, including uh, the government. Now here we integrate government as a decision uh, maker. So you can see here that government employ uh, uh, resources, interact with the resource market, and also the product market by buying uh, goods and services. Right. Government also provide uh, goods and services to businesses and uh, households. All these product and services provided by government um, are all financed through uh, net taxes. When I say net taxes, uh, refer to taxes minus or transfer payment. Um, okay, so the government finances, Good and service, this is the good and services purchased by, uh, by government are part of a GDP. If you can recall the formula of the GDP, we have a G, right? That stands for government spending. So the good and services so that uh, government purchases are part of uh, uh, the GDP. Transfer payment do not contribute to GDP, right? Because the recipient, or for those transferred, do not make any contribution to the current GDP, right? Unemployment benefit, uh, social security for the retiree, right? All those things, those people who uh, benefit for benefit for from those uh, transfer payment, they are not doing anything for the current GDP. Okay, government uh, spending and tax revenue uh, need to uh, finance uh, all the spending and uh, all those are spending or uh, 30 or 33% of GDP, which I will show you uh, in uh, one of the Next uh, slide, gonna discuss that. So here, government spending, government purchases have declined. If you, comp you compare this, uh, the, uh, the chart over here, 
Uh, the chart show you that in uh, 1960 compared to uh, 2018. So if you, the blue area represent the government pressures, right? So if you look at it in 1960, uh, government pressures as a, a percentage of output is a little bit higher, right? Compared to now it's a decline. And in the same time period, the transfer, government transfer payment uh, increases, right? While we have the government uh, uh, pressures to decline, from uh, 1960 to 2018, you will see that government uh, transfer payment increases. Right. So total government spending, right, uh, purchase plus uh, uh, transfer uh, rose from uh, almost 27% of a US GDP to um, about 32%, but the breakdown is uh, different. And this information is provided by uh, the BEA, uh, the Bureau of uh, Economic Analysis. Uh, this is global perspective. Show the, uh, the tax revenue, right? Or a nation uh, uh, tax burden as a percentage of GDP uh, for selected industrialized uh, nation in uh, uh, 2017. The more you see, the more the country or the nation here, right? The United States uh, has a very moderate tax burden right, compared to the other nation. The right? United States is uh, even below. Canada. So now let's shift to federal expenditures. Under this category, um, the pension and uh, social security, right, including um, many uh, income maintenance programs, for uh, age, we have social security, uh, person with a disability, uh, employed, retiree, uh, and family with no uh, a breadwinner. This category account for 36% uh, for total federal spending, followed by health and national defense, 16%. Uh, the next uh, slide, I give you the breakdown of the chart, show you the source of uh, revenue, the source of revenue here, and we have a uh, federal expenditure uh, here. And we for all the breakdown, right? we'll go 36% go to our pensions, and uh, income security, we have 27% uh, of the expenditure. Um, it's allocated to health, 16% to national defense, and 8% here is to pay the interest on the debt. So if you own a uh, government security, just like that you are earning those interests, and you are part of this 8%, that the federal government spend to pay the interest to those who own government security and how the revenue is collected. Right. So 51% uh, uh, or from um, personal income taxes, we have 35% from uh, payroll taxes and uh, corporate taxes account for 6%. Uh, you have the SI taxes and the, the other taxes that come for the rest. Fair tax revenue, we'll break it down. Personal income tax are central to the US uh, federal tax system. 
the personal income tax is levied on a taxable income of household and uh, unincorporated businesses right? after certain uh, deduction. It is a progressive system of tax. So uh, a progressive tax means that um, the higher tax rates uh, apply to a higher uh, bracket of income, right? Higher income bracket. So if you are in the high income bracket, your tax rate is higher and vice versa. So the marginal tax rate here is uh, the tax rate per on each additional unit of income, tax rate per on each additional unit of income. And the average uh, tax rate is found by taking the total tax per, uh, you divide it by uh, the total taxable income Right, to come up with for uh, the average tax rate. Payroll taxes are uh, taxes on uh, wages and income, right? That is used to uh, finance um, social security and uh, medic Medicare. Use it for retiree. The corporate income tax is a tax on a corporation's profit. And for most firm, it is a, um, a proportional, it's 35% uh, that 35%. The last one is uh, the excise taxes or taxes that are imposed on a specific uh, a good. Example of it will be taxes on uh, cigarettes and uh, alcohol. So they target those product and uh, impose taxes on, uh, on them. This table that show you uh, the tax rate for married couple filing a joint, a married couple filing a, a joint tax return in uh, 2019. Right. So these are the income bracket, and you have the marginal uh, tax rates, and you have the total tax on the highest income bracket. That's collecting. Yeah, we have the average uh, tax rate. So now let's shift to um, the state expenditures and um, how the state fund those uh, uh, expenditures. So here we have the two uh, pie chart. Uh, the one on your left to show you the state expenditures and the breakdown. This is of uh, data from 2016. And uh, on your right, you have uh, the type of uh, tax revenue collected by a state to cover the expenditures. You can see here, one thing to notice here is the tax revenue collected is less than uh, the total uh, state expenditure. Right. So someone will ask why, why is like that how the, the state cover the differential? There's some allocation from the federal level uh, that help the state to, to cover certain expenditures as well. So for the local government, that's the same thing here. 
So um, that's revenue cover less um, than half of uh, local government expenditure. And the balance is uh, covered by a uh, uh, grant from federal and um, state government. Right, then here you see the tax revenue collected less than uh, um, the expenditure because of those grants that the federal and the state will allocate it to, to the local government. On your right, we have also uh, uh, the chart show the source of uh, the revenue, the different type of revenue that uh, the local government collected. And the information is from uh, the Bureau of Census. Employment. Government employment, we have the federal employee and you have uh, the state and the local employee. The state, <clears throat> state, local, and federal uh, government employment represent about 14% of uh, uh, US labor. And uh, the charts here show you uh, the percentage of a government employee assigned to different tax at the federal. Uh, state and uh, local level. US government, including uh, uh, local and state and federal government together, employ about uh, 20 uh, million workers, 20 million workers. So federal government alone, is uh, 2 million, right. so which is, uh, I think, the largest uh, employer, right, followed by uh, Walmart, I believe, uh, which is uh, uh, about 2 million, if I'm not mistaken. Taxes are a major source of, uh, of funding goods and services provided by, uh, by government. And also uh, for salary and wages that government pay to uh, its uh, employee. So you will see that without uh, taxes, there will be no public a good, uh, quasi public good uh, or services provided because they had to fund those uh, service and good that government provide. And the only revenue government have is uh, revenue from taxation. So oh, now the question is uh, who should pay those taxes and how much taxes uh, one should, should pay? So that led to a lot of uh, controversy. Right. Some people, some economic approach uh, the subject by uh, putting forward uh, these two principles, right? The benefits received based principle and the ability to pay uh, a based principle. Right. So based on the benefit uh, received, uh, principle, those who benefit from um, the government uh, good and services should pay for them, right? So the, the principle state that for those who benefit from the service provided government should fund the service, right? should pay for. 
And this view is used to collect uh, uh, taxes on, uh, on gas uh, to fund uh, uh, the construction and the maintenance of, uh, of a highway. Right, since uh, um, the individual using highway are those purchasing or those who purchase the gas for the car. So it's uh, logical to impose the tax or the, the, the revenue needed to maintain or construct those highway on people who are using it. So that's the, uh, the benefit receipt principle is uh, the baseline uh, to impose uh, um, tax on gas. However, the principle, the principle become uh, much more difficult to apply to things like uh, uh, public education, for instance, the defense, right? So imposing uh, taxes based on the ability to pay principal um, mean that uh, the taxes are based upon uh, a person's ability uh, to pay, basically a person income. So the, the wealthier uh, individual with uh, greater income, right? And they, they can afford to pay those taxes. They can afford to pay those services compared to they do not have, we don't have the income uh, to cover the basic need, so they won't pay those taxes. So again, to summarize here, the benefit receipt principle is state that people who use the benefit uh, for the services provided by government should pay for. Right? And the second one, the ability to pay is people who can afford it. Right? The wealthier should pay taxes on, uh, on the service because they can afford to pay for it. Uh, tax classification. Taxes are classified into uh, one of these three uh, category. Right. So the personal income taxes are progressive, as we defined before. Uh, since uh, the, the marginal uh, tax rate rise as uh, the income rise. Regressive taxes, example of it is uh, a sales tax. It's a, a regressive uh, tax uh, relative to, uh, to the income because the larger proportion of uh, low income households uh, pay taxes So the the larger proportion of uh, low income household income uh, is paid as a sales tax. Um, the payroll taxes are regressive. Um, Social Security taxes have uh, a limit where well, once uh, an individual have uh, reach uh, the uh, income limit, uh, reach the income limit, that person will no longer have to pay uh, social security taxes for, for the year. Corporate taxes are proportional, right? It's set to 35%. To the corporate income.
to determine the classification of uh, a particular tax is not an uh, easy task. Why? Because uh, those on whom taxes are alleviated do not always uh, pay them. So we therefore need to understand the tax incidence, right? Which is the, the degree to which a tax burden uh, fall on a, a person or a group of persons. So we're gonna introduce here the concept of elasticity that we learned from chapter seven. So we're gonna review this uh, graph over here with a certain assumption. So let's assume here that government levy an excess tax of uh, $2 uh, on a good. What a $2 will do is if you look at the original supply curve X over here, by imposing $2, on the, on the good, what happened to the supply curve? Right, you see that the supply curve is shift to the left. Right, the, the two dollar excess that imposed by government here push the supply curve to the left. As a result, the equilibrium that we have originally quantity of 15 with a corresponding price of eight, right? That's what the consumer were paying before the taxes. But after the taxes, the equilibrium rise. The equilibrium rises from uh, the eight dollars, now it's about nine dollars. So what that means is that the price that the consumer would pay on the market, a shift from eight dollars, right? The original equilibrium, uh, to the new equilibrium, which is nine dollars. So, in this particular case, the consumer pay one dollars out of the two dollars excise tax imposed by government. And at the same token, the producer, right, the new equilibrium be at this level. If you project it to the supply curve. You have to cross the original supply curve to uh, this point over here, and the corresponding price is uh, seven. So you will see here that the two dollars uh, excise tax imposes one dollar to the consumer. The consumer will pay one dollar, and uh, the other dollars uh, is paid by uh, the producer because now the producer will receive seven dollars instead of. Uh, eight before the taxes. So in this case, the tax burden shared by uh, the consumer and the producer. So these two figures here uh, contrast the case when the, uh, the elasticity of demand uh, change. So one with uh, a relative elastic demand and the other one with a relative inelastic demand. So you can see that if the demand is elastic, right, the demand is elastic, you do the same exercise. Um, the supply before taxes is here, right? The original equilibrium, give you P1 and the quantity is a key one. Right. So if government impose taxes, that will shift the supply curve to the left and uh, changing the equilibrium price. So the equilibrium price rise from uh, P1 to P2. So now the consumer, instead of paying P1, they're gonna pay P2, that's a new equilibrium. Right. And uh, the producer, instead of receiving P1, they're gonna receive P3. 
So you can see here that if the demand is uh, elastic, right, the rise in price is, uh, is uh, modest for the consumer. But in the same token, the producer will have uh, the most of the task burden, right? Because you see the gap over here compared to the gap here. This is a case of uh, uh, demand being relatively uh, elastic. But if the demand is uh, inelastic, uh, the, the burden, majority of the task burden go toward the consumer and just a little bit or less is uh, less of the burden to the producer. So the consumer will burn, uh, consumer burn most of the taxes in case the demand for the good is uh, inelastic. Right. So the gap over here, original equilibrium price compared to the new equilibrium price after taxes. So the consumer will pay P5 versus the producer gonna pay P6. And you see that the consumer born the majority of, uh, of the tax. So here we're gonna uh, look at it on the supply side. Right. So if the supply is elastic. So in this uh, figure, we contrast what will happen with uh, a specific demand. When the supply is uh, elastic and when the supply is uh, uh, inelastic. Right. When the supply is elastic, the The rising price, so the rising price. So if you do the same exercise, is a uh, uh, substantial, right? And the consumer will pay a larger uh, portion of the tax. Right? So here to here, the consumer gonna pay a large portion of the tax, and when the uh, supply is more inelastic, uh, the inverse will happen, right? The price is small and the sellers or the producer will be a most of, uh, of the tax. So now let's look at a case of loss taxes and uh, efficiency loss. So we have uh, uh, seen in the previous slide that um, uh, the producer and the consumer typically uh, be a part of uh, uh, a tax levy on a good right? and uh, in different proportion. So this figure, take a closer look at the overall uh, economic effort of uh, imposing uh, tax on a product. It show the proportion paid by consumer and also the area of the proportion. This area show the proportion of the, the tax paid by uh, the producer. You can see that because of the Taxes, because of the tax over here, in our case, to the uh, tax that was levied on the product, there's a loss of efficiency. If you guys recall, we talk about the surplus, producer surplus and consumer surplus be maximized if uh, we are producing uh, um, optimum output. Right? So here, by imposing the taxes, what we see here is uh, there's an underproduction 
that generate this uh, loss of efficiency, right? The dead weight loss that uh, we alluded to before. So this gray triangle that we have here represent uh, the loss of efficiency because of the position of our two dollar two dollars taxes in our case here. So this table give you the probable uh, incidence of uh, taxes on each of the major uh, source of uh, tax revenue in the United States. So you have, uh, these are the type of uh, taxes and the probable incidence. U.S. tax structures. So overall, the higher income group per a larger uh, percentage of the income as uh, federal taxes than lower uh, income group. As a, a percentage of uh, income, property taxes, and uh, sales of taxes uh, fall as uh, income rises. So state income taxes are generally less progressive than uh, uh, federal income taxes. So to summarize, the higher income group carry uh, a larger uh, tax burden as the percentage of the income compared to uh, lower income income group. Right? That's uh, the progressiveness of uh, uh, our tax system. There was a study done uh, by uh, two economists, two economists from uh, non, uh, non-partisan tax foundation. And the question they attempt to, to solve or attempt to answer is that does a government uh, transfer a significant amount of income uh, from they do have the rich uh, to the poor uh, through the taxation and uh, spending. Uh, because there was a, there's a concern that the large taxes that government collected just merely get recycled. What I mean by that is what the government collected a lot of taxes from uh, the rich and uh, use those tax revenue to produce a good and services. And there's um, a speculation that a good and services that government produce benefit more to the rich than the poor. So if it's true, mean that, yes, what we collect taxes from the rich, but we recycle those taxes because of it end up being, uh, or the services end up being used for our service uh, produced by those tax revenue end up being used by people who pay those taxes, who pay, who pay more those taxes. Our case here, yeah, the rich. So that's why the, those economists want to look at the data to be able to answer the question of who benefit uh, the tax revenue. Uh, they collected the data from 2012, and those data show that uh, the poor do receive more government supply goods and services uh, than they pay in taxes. So if you compare the taxes that they pay 
to the service you receive, they receive more. They do not have, or the poor receive more of the benefit um, than the taxes to the pay. So to that point, it's a, a redistribution of the income instead of recycling the, the tax. So if, let's say the, the, the rich take more advantage or benefit more of the service uh, produced by government, so that would be a recycle because they pay and they end up, they end up uh, using the benefit of what uh, the money that they pay to taxation. So the 2012 data showed that uh, the, the poor receive more government benefit above government good and services than uh, the tax that they, uh, they pay. 